Looking up at the stars and planets arrayed in the night sky, have you ever wondered how it's all put together? How our universe, our galaxy, our planet, ourselves, formed out of the chaos of the Big Bang? Scientists around the world have long wondered the same thing. With powerful telescopes, they've peered at the outer reaches of our universe and gradually assembled a picture of the earliest moments of its history. But many mysteries remain. I'm John Marburger, director of the United States Department of Energy's Brookhaven National Laboratory on Long Island, New York. With the help of hundreds of scientists from many nations, we've assembled a powerful new scientific machine that will help unveil some of the mysteries of the early universe. This machine is not like a telescope looking outward toward the vastness of space. It's more like a microscope looking inward at the minute universe contained within the protons and neutrons that make up most of matter. Scientists call this new and powerful microscope the Relativistic Heavy Ion Collider. Fortunately, they've also given it a friendly nickname, Rick. Rick is big. Two underground rings, each nearly two and a half miles around. That's why it took 10 years and an international effort led by the U.S. Department of Energy to build it. To understand exactly what this new atomic microscope will do, let's start with its name, word by word. First, there's relativistic, a word Albert Einstein used to describe things that travel at nearly the speed of light. Nothing can move faster than light at 186,000 miles per second. Near this speed, according to Einstein, most energy used to accelerate an object goes not to increase its speed, but its mass. So Rick particles move about as fast as anything can go, and they have tremendous mass energy from being accelerated within the big rings. Next, there's the phrase heavy ion. Ions are atoms whose electrons have been stripped away. That leaves only the tiny nucleus made of protons and neutrons. Many machines similar to Rick accelerate single protons, which are nuclei of the lightest element hydrogen. But Rick can accelerate much heavier ions up to the weight of gold, 197 times heavier than hydrogen. Lastly, there's the word collider. Rick will bring together those speeding heavy ions in microscopic head-on collisions. The ions form a thinned out stream of gas in bunches circulating in opposite directions inside the Rick rings. One ring for clockwise bunches and one for counterclockwise. At up to six points around the ring, the bunches are directed toward each other so collisions can occur. It all happens very fast so thousands of collisions can take place each second. This animation shows representative single ions within the bunches. The ions appear flattened by another relativistic effect predicted by Einstein. It is in these collisions that scientists will look for properties of the early universe. For a brief moment, all the protons and neutrons in the colliding gold ions, plus all the mass energy they gained from acceleration, will be concentrated into a hot, dense blob. This miniature fiery ball mimics the entire universe just after its explosive birth in the Big Bang. At these extreme temperatures and densities generated in, in these collisions, the protons and neutrons, which make up the gold ions, literally melt into their constituent parts. Now, theory tells us that each individual proton and neutron consists of three quarks and their associated gluons. A gold ion consists of a, essentially a big assembly of neutrons and protons. And when we collide these ions at very nearly the speed of light, we create momentarily a tiny volume in which the quarks and gluons are released from their bondage inside the individual neutrons and protons and are free to move around in the larger volume and interact with each other. This, we believe, is the condition in which all matter existed immediately after the Big Bang, the 
the creation of the universe some 15 billion years ago. This extremely hot, dense state of quarks and gluons, a trillion degrees Fahrenheit, is called a quark-gluon plasma. This plasma exists for a very short period of time. It expands, it cools, and it condenses into ordinary particles, like the familiar neutrons and protons, and lighter particles called mesons, and electrons, and photons. Each collision at Rick produces a vast shower of these particles, and the object of the experiments at Rick is to use these giant detectors which we've built to examine the characteristics of each of these showers, and we can reproduce these collisions over and over thousands of times per second. And we look within these showers of particles for the characteristic footprints which we hope will lead us back to an understanding of the primordial quark-gluon plasma, and from that, a more fundamental understanding of the very nature of matter. The gold ions start here in the tandem Van de Graaff accelerator. It's a linear device that uses static electricity to send the gold ions on their way in the direction I'm walking. They go into a beam transfer line that takes them to the booster accelerator where they're whirled up to speed and then injected into the AGS or alternating gradient synchrotron. Rick itself only provides the last big kick to its speeding ions. 50 Physicists and engineers from around the world have teamed up to corral these showers of particles in four giant detector arrays, like huge digital cameras. Each experiment can trace the many particles produced by a Rick collision and make sense of them all. These experiments are located around the ring at points where the bunches of ions cross, and each has a different way to look for different properties of the tiny fireballs produced by collisions, complementing one another in the quest to find new knowledge. All of them use advanced detection technology and powerful computers to reconstruct events that occurred immediately after the instant of collision. Phobos is designed to take a vast number of events. In the first year, about a billion collisions we want to study. Uh, to do that, we built a very high rate device. Uh, and a proof of the pudding is that, in fact, Phobos, by the morning, you know, by the early hours of that first day, had uh, already observed almost a thousand gold-gold collisions. When these gold beams come together, they're first of all traveling at very near the speed of light. And when they collide, a tremendous amount of energy from their very high speeds is converted into internal energy, which we hope to be able to make this new state of matter, which is the quark gluon plasma. Um, what you see here is the first event at Rick in the star detector. And the straight line tracks are particles that are created in this very high speed collision, almost head-on collision, of these two very heavy nuclei. And the, the tracks are the particles coming out from this collision point. And you can see as this picture rotates the various views from different directions around the detector. Phoenix is different from the other detectors in that it images the interior of the collision. You might think of the other detectors as taking a picture of the outside of the body, while Phoenix provides the CAT scans and X-rays that have proven so fruitful in understanding what's going on on the inside. The, the payoff is when you see something that is a new fact about nature. It's an extraordinarily good feeling, hard to describe until you've had it, but it's definitely okay. worth it. When the Rick collisions first happened in the Brahms area, I was so lucky to be in the rig main control room and saw the operators steering the beams in the, around the detector and saw the first little glimpses of collision signals on a, on a monitor display there. So, uh, in terms of society, I think the rig physics as well as basic science in most ways really helps humanity in exploring the the knowledge both at the subatomic but also at the cosmological level. I think this kind of understanding 
enriches human life. Hundreds of people worked for nearly a decade to design and build these detector arrays. Here you see one of them in a film made of pictures taken once each minute during assembly. More than 400 physicists and engineers worked on each of the teams that built the two largest detectors, Star and Phoenix. The teams for the two smaller detectors, Brahms and Phobos, each have dozens of members. Even as the four experiments took shape, others took care of all the technical infrastructure that makes RIC collisions possible. Builders, welders, electricians, and other skilled craftsmen constructed RIC's rings with the high precision needed for the task. The interesting and unique aspect of what we are doing here at RIC is, is the fact that this is, in a very real sense, a pure research uh, facility. Unlike most of the existing high energy facilities where the specific physics goals were known in a great deal of detail before the program uh, was actually turned on, we to a very large extent do not understand the physics that we are going to see. So it will truly be a machine of discovery. What will be revealed as the data come in is anyone's guess. So little is known, it's difficult even to speculate what we may find out. And that's what makes it so exciting.